every Sunday, we have uh, 800 words. We're now factoring our inverter efficiency and perhaps uh, maybe give consideration to future expansion. So we go for a 1,000 word. However, anything above 2,000 words for this amount of load is an overkill. Renewable energy solution is all about sustainability and efficiency. Thus, you have to properly calculate each of the components you have on a solar system setup, including an inverter for optimal efficiency. You know, battery banks, solar panels, and chargers all supply DC current, but most of the appliances in a home use AC current. So an inverter comes into play and it does the nice job of converting DC current to AC current so we can power this AC devices in our homes. To choose the right size of inverter for a solar system setup, you have to factor in inverter efficiency as well as safety factor. For a decent inverter, perhaps the pure sine wave type from brands such as Vicron, Schneider, and Apiver, you can get 90% efficiency or 0.9 safety factor. And what this means basically is that the energy loss and converting DC current to AC current is pretty minimal compared to the quasi wave or modified wave inverters. And uh, with the modified wave inverters, you have a lot of loss factor or a lot of energy loss for DC to AC current conversion. Though the pure sine wave inverters are pretty expensive and can cost 10 times or even more the amount of getting modified or quasi wave inverters, uh, you can get smooth current from this uh, pure sine wave inverters to power the AC devices in your home, some of which don't work pretty well on quasi mode or quasi wave uh, inverters. Now, another thing to keep in mind when sizing your inverter is future expansion. Should you want to expand your you know, solar system setup in the future to accommodate more load, then you want to go for an inverter that can handle the future expansion. Let's say you're setting up a renewable energy solution to drive 1000 watt load. In the future, you want to expand it to accommodate 2000 watts. So what you would want to do is go for a 2,500 watt inverter that can conveniently accommodate the future expansion so you don't spend a lot of money replacing some of the expensive components in your solar system setup during an upgrade. Now, we consider the load that we're going to have on the inverter. This is the total sum of the power from all the loads we're putting on the inverter. Um, we've got a list of devices that we will have on the inverter. And we have a number of devices for each of the items on the list and the power rating for each of the items, the starting power also for each of the items. Some uh, electronic devices have much higher starting power than their power rating. And when you get an inverter that doesn't have as much power as uh, specified for the power rating or for the starting power rating of a device, when you put the device on the inverter, it trips off or the device even damages the inverter. So you have to take this into consideration and this is what we're working with. And uh, our refrigerator is 200 watt having a starting power of 350 watts, laptop 65, 65, television 80, 80. For the bulbs we've got 10 uh, bulbs and each is rated 10 watt. We multiply 10 by 10 and we get 100 watts. DC fan 25, 25. And this guy here announcing itself as Starlink has 80 watt power rating and 180 watt uh, starting power. And if we sum this up, we have uh, 800 watts. Uh, so we're now factoring our inverter efficiency and perhaps uh, maybe give consideration to a future expansion. But I think for the sake of this video, we just work with the inverter efficiency. Summing up the power for all the devices from our comprehensive table for load calculation, we get 800 watts, which if we now divide by our inverter safety factor of 0 0.9, we get 889 watts. That's approximately 900 watts. So we go for a 1000 watt inverter for this calculation. However, anything above 2000 watts for this amount of load is an overkill unless you have a plan to upgrade your system in the future or perhaps expand it to uh, handle more load. When setting up an inverter or solar system, consider doing a load calculation beforehand. It comes pretty handy in properly sizing each of the components that make up the system. In the description of this video is a link to a video on battery sizing that includes a comprehensive load calculation uh, plus a table 
uh, the table offers all the details that you need to properly size your load you know uh, use it to determine the size of battery the size of solar panel for your solar system uh, setup this brings us to the end of this video and thanks for watching if you like it please give it a thumbs up and if you dislike it like it anyway and let me know in the comment section uh, what you think see you in the next one and bye for now